my story begins uh, with receiving an email from Courtney about this mic drop. And so I said, let me just open it, see what it's about. And only two words stuck out to me, which was public speaking. And that was all I wanted to read and not. So my heart stopped. I think my blood pressure went through the roof and I went into a complete panic. I'm not doing this. No, no, I'm going to find every excuse in the book. I'm not doing this at all. I'm just going to go talk to my manager and say, you know what? Uh, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> but I went home that night and I talked to my husband and my friends and I I said, this is like the worst thing ever. And I've worked here for like seven years. I'm not, <laughs> I'm definitely not going to do this because I'm quiet. I'm reserved. I'm an introvert. I'm, I'm just not going to do this. This is not me at all. Um, but my husband talked me into it because he's the complete opposite of me. And I think that's why we're so well balanced. And uh, so I went to the first seminar I said, all right, this is okay. I'm not sharing, but uh, this is okay. It's really not about public speaking. Uh, it's much more. And the second day went by, still not sharing. And after that day, I kind of gave it some thought. And I decided to speak. And I had forgotten somewhere along the way that uh, my voice does mean something, that it can be heard, and it could make an impact on somebody else. So I'll take you back to when I was in middle school, that one of my girlfriends and I, we, we used to have sleepovers, and we would do everything that girls would do. And... We were obsessed with NSYNC at the time, and it was like ridiculous obsession. So we would play music. We would talk about the concerts we went to. We would play Mad Libs. But our favorite thing was to write stories. We wrote tons of short stories. And I mean, books upon books of stories. And at some point, I had typed them up and had saved them. And uh, my eighth grade English teacher had announced that she was accepting extra credit for creative writing. I thought, oh, well, I have a book of those. Like, I, easy, got it, in the bag. So I started submitting my paperwork to this teacher. And after she would review it, she'd give me feedback. I'd get points. This is great. Like, I feel great on top of the world. I feel confident. Um until one day that one paper came back and there was no th nothing comments, like no comments on the top, no points. I'm like, mm, what's this about? And um, I flipped it over and there was a big zero, no points, she couldn't accept it. And I remember like this feeling in my stomach that cringed because I didn't read it before I submitted it. And I could feel the embarrassment just crawling from my chest up to my face. And I was just so embarrassed. I couldn't even face that teacher for the rest of the year. I said, forget it. I'm done. Um, I vowed not to write anymore. And to flash forward uh, to about five years ago, I picked up a new hobby which was reading. And I'm sure my husband would say it's not really a hobby. It's probably more of a condition. Um, <laughs> because I was reading um, upwards of 50 to 75 books a year. Um, and each year I would set that goal to be higher. And I had a friend who shared the common hobby slash sickness of getting engrossed in these books. And we would talk about them. We would talk about the characters, the plot, how it turned out, what we would have changed. And something started in me where I was like, I could write this so much better. These people are bestsellers and this is, sorry, ears, it's crap. 
Um, it wasn't good. But I, for some reason, got a computer in my lap. I started to write something down, something that just struck something in me that I was like, you know what, I'm just going to write it down and I'll leave it there. And I got enough courage to tell my friend, listen, I like wrote this stupid thing if you want to read it. You know, I mean, you can read it. Just tell me what you think. And she read it. She said, send me the next chapter. So I did. And it was funny because um, for today, I actually went back to our email chains from 2013, (laughs) where I was literally sending her piece by piece, like no edits, no changes, no nothing, just raw. Here it is. And one that made me laugh that she came back at was, she said, well, she said, you're like leaving me on the edge. She said, this shit's good. I was like, all right, cool. Like, great. So it gave me this like confidence boost. So I kept writing and I finished the book. So it's kind of like, all right, well, what now? You know, still reading a hundred books a year. And, um, it wasn't until about nine months later that I um, I was on my maternity leave for our first daughter that I actually had some time on my hands to kind of see it through. I did a ton of research um, on the authors that I was reading, so I did my homework. For once, I, like, wanted to do homework. <laughs> and um, I figured out Amazon. I figured out Barnes and Noble. I created a pen name. So I had the confidence to write as me, but not really kind of smoke and mirrors. Um, but I, um, I did found my illustrator. I found my public or not publisher because I'm self-publisher. Um, I found the illustrator, the editor, I created my own website, I created my own email, I created my own brand, I made my own images. I I created myself in a sense that I wrote something down that was my voice. So I, I said, you know, I put so much work into it, I might as well just do something with it. And um, I submitted my manuscript on Amazon. <clears throat> Um, I honestly could have cared less if I sold one book or a thousand books. It was just something that was mine, um, that I created from start to finish, nobody else's. I was proud of it. It's something that came from my fingertips, my brain, And nobody could take that away. Nobody could tell me, can't accept this, because guess what? It's out on the internet. (laughs) And the entire world can read it and see it and leave me their feedback. And the feedback was mixed. I mean, it was was great. Um, And the ones that weren't so nice, I read them, and it made me laugh, because I was like, well, you know, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but... People actually, like, they related to the story. They took it serious. And they wanted the next book. So I looked up my numbers. Not only did I sell one book, not only did I sell a 1,000 books, but I sold over 10,000 books in my first year. And it it kind of blew me away that I was like, okay, this is just not serious. But I guess people were actually interested in what I had to say. And I thought I couldn't let these people down. So I came out with the second book. And I came out with the third book. And I invested time on webinars and Photoshop. I hate Photoshop. <laughs> it's like so not user friendly. <laughs> um, yeah, like leave that to the professionals. Um, <clears throat> but it 
it was definitely one of my biggest accomplishments. Um, and it's, it's really funny to sit here and tell you all today that I'm a self-publishing author. Like that just sounds weird and not familiar to me, but it is who I am on, you know, behind the curtains and it's something I enjoy doing and it's a hobby of mine. I don't feel like it's a job. I don't need somebody to pay me to do it. I just want to do it and it makes me happy. And I had the support from my friends and my family to do it. And, you know, what's better than doing something you love and taking a leap of faith and like putting yourself out there, like who cares? And, you know, I just, I took a step back and my whole message has changed from the story of not only doing something you love, but you know, taking a leap of faith and getting out there. And I didn't realize how much courage and confidence that I had while writing those books. And I didn't even realize it. And doing our exercises for today, I can feel those same feelings because honestly, I stopped writing after my second daughter uh, I had medical conditions where I couldn't write. I was juggling two kids and there just wasn't time for it. But it was so interesting because I'm getting those same feels back where I'm like, I told Rosh, I said, you know what? I actually opened up my fourth book where I stopped and I want to pick it back up. I want to, you know, go back to doing something I love, even if it's 15 minutes of my day or 500 words um, at a time. I do want to get back to it. And I just hope that in the long run, I know it's going to be like years and years and years before my kids know that I even do this. Um, but I just hope, um, I hope that it gives them the courage to go out on a limb and not worry about what people say or think. Um, I just want them to have the courage to, to do what they want to do and follow their dreams because God knows where it'll take them. And I just hope that, you know, not for only them, but anybody else listening is, you know, if you want to do it, just do it and take the chance. Like who cares what's going to happen? And you know, just just take that leap. <laughs> that's all you gotta do. So that's what I'm gonna do again. 